The president and CEO says that they are canceling third shift because of what happened inside the building behind me. Now we cut an orange in half. This side we left inside our live truck, and as you can see, squeezes pretty easily. This side we left out here for about two hours, and as you can hear, solid as a rock. The business was broken into by a bolt cutter. The lock clipped right off. Some call the 60-year-old Globetrotter resourceful, brilliant, and rich. Marshall say a millionaire with enough cash back up his calls. Another letter was sent out, but when it arrived at the new address, Erdman wasn't living there. That's a violation of his parole. And we'll take you right to the activity. You can see over my left shoulder dozens of emergency responder vehicles. All the parties are pretty much on the same page. I'm apparently Love making you. lots of friends out here. Thanks, man. We're live at Summerfest. Jeremy Ross, Fox 6 News. The shooting seemed like it wasn't going to stop. After the police tape wrapped around a Milwaukee neighborhood, I just don't understand what they can't <laughs> Tears and heartache followed. I know it had to be somebody's loved one. Huh? <laughs> because they was crying so hard, man. Family members say the body of 31-year-old Wilbert Lewis rested outside of the door of Atkinson Beer and Liquor Mart in the early afternoon. They don't care about it. Deal right now. His uncle Tony Lewis describes him as a man who didn't look for trouble. Didn't pick with nobody. Didn't pick with nobody, man. Trouble found Lewis, however. He was shot and killed, as was a 49 year old man. Police say a 48 year old man was also injured. Yes. In a cascade of gunfire. That many shots. Boom, 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 like this. The sounds were especially chilling, given the kind of noise you'd normally hear from the children's park across the street. Who wants their kids to get hit by a stray bullet? You don't want to get hit by a stray bullet. <sighs> Started, I, I was just crying, man. I, I, I didn't have no reaction. Lewis's loved ones have no idea what triggered the triple shooting. Somebody seen something. Nobody didn't see Somebody seen something. Oh, it was sad, you know. I want to know who done it. And police tell us a 48-year-old man is in stable condition this evening. Police say that no one is in custody in connection with a double murder at this time. We're live on the city's north side. Jeremy Ross, Fox 6 News. When you no longer have a flagpole, you find another way to hang old glory. There is no sign. When you've lost most of your street signs, you find another way to mark where you live when you have no change of clothing. And we got socks, underwear, T-shirts. You find whatever you can. Let's see, I got some jeans and some, my jeans, my Walmart jeans. <laughs> can I claim Jennifer it? Mendoza is one of hundreds in Washington, Illinois, who lost their home to a tornado. It's a little overwhelming when you see it for the first time. I had to prepare my brother and my sister when they were coming in. The family helps with the enormous task of sorting and cleaning what remains. I cry over the um, Overwhelming help. You know, just from strangers, even. It's great here. I mean, it's a sunny day. It's a good day to clean up. So, we've been sorting through multiple houses over the last couple days. Joshua Mason and his father don't even live here. They're helping a friend. Because his wife is pregnant. Who's about to need even more help. And ready to blow. They salvage what remains inside a home with a view no one ever wanted to see. X marks the spot of so much destruction, but also so much cooperation. Nah, he's just my friend. Has been since junior high. It seems like we'll be all right. There's enough people around, we'll get through it. The flags outside this Milwaukee home are in good shape. We can't say the same for what's inside. When it rains, it pours. It's not a steady downpour, but a tireless trickle. As you can see, drip, drip, drip. What misses the buckets makes its way to the carpeting and eventually makes an impression on Virgie Rogers. This has to be dripping from the second floor upstairs. Inside the headquarters of Veterans Helping Veterans, you'll find the stark contrast of ornate art and tattered tiles, classical furniture, and modern heating needs. <laughs> If I was a smoker, I'd say smoke, <laughs> but I'm not a smoker, so I'm cold. Broken radiators have sent a chill throughout the house that only two weeks ago used to host veteran meetings. Rogers heads up a nonprofit whose mission is to help homeless vets, but during this visit... Oh boy, I didn't see this. She's instead on a mission to find the next leak. Sounds like something's running over here. Lack of funding and time have taken its toll on this home and on the Women's Army Corvette 
who served in Vietnam. If I wasn't so stubborn, I'd give up, but I can't give up. I'm not a quitter. The nonprofit has separate housing for veterans. That one is worse. That structure is boarded up and in need of greater repairs. It's been vacant for about two years, but one sheltered up to about 50 people at a time, with hundreds helped over the last two decades with Roger's tough love. That's they call you Mother Teresa. I say, come on, guys. I'm anything but Mother Teresa. You act up and watch out for me. Now she's trying to keep her head and her nonprofit above water. We're at a standstill. kind of a rural road. Not all roads lead near the small village of Hammond, Wisconsin. But one that's a few miles away in St. Croix County led a man down a path paved with questions and unimaginable heartache. She's remembered on a daily basis. Since the fall of 2006, a roadside memorial marks the place where a car coming back from a shopping trip never made it home. It was about 38 miles an hour when it impacted the tree. Crash pictures show the wreckage partially wrapped around a tree. Vehicle left the roadway, the tires left the pavement as it flew through the air before coming to a violent stop. None of the people inside were wearing seat belts. The driver would survive, two passengers would not. Why it happened remained a mystery, and even who was killed was shrouded in doubt at the beginning. When I got there, they said she's gone. Every day I think about her. It was a hard moment. I haven't cried like that in a long time. Following the crash, Doug Weigel lost his 18-year-old daughter, Natasha. She passed away in her arms. Natasha's stepfather, Ken Reimer, watched helplessly. I'll never get to be a grandma or the mother of the bride. Her mother, Jane Reimer, lost her only child. Something wasn't right with this whole accident. Unfortunately, the teen who died in front of them wasn't Natasha. Mix-ups happen. I really thought that was my daughter. Amy Rodemaker was a young girl that was uh, that died in our arms. We all said, you better get that mother in here right now. You know, she, she missed her own daughter. Natasha's friend, 15-year-old Amy Rodemaker, passed away first. She was misidentified at the hospital because of the severity of the injuries. Natasha's fight for survival, on the other hand, spanned more than a week. Time passed as she remained in a coma. On the 11th day in the hospital, her fight came to a tragic end. I spent the first two weeks driving home every day after work bawling in my car. I wanted to be there for her in her life, and I'll never have that chance. We've always looked for the answer. When we figured it wasn't going to come to us until the day we met these girls, you know, in heaven ourselves, and maybe they'd have the answer for it. About seven years later, an answer to the roadside question haunting the family was finally delivered. The aha moment, yes. Um, it was actually Valentine's night. In February, General Motors announced the recall of millions of vehicles due to malfunctioning ignition switches, including the Chevrolet Cobalt Natasha and Amy were in. A part inside the console, a piece of fraction of the size of a quarter similar to this one could fail. Switching a vehicle out of its running position into one instantly cutting off things like power steering and safety features. Reimer believes the small amount of weight added to the car ignition key. The keys attached to a keychain could have led to the fatal failure that ended Natasha's life. That was pulling the key down, or as far as if you had other keys and that on it. It just wasn't as strong enough. And there's no words to describe how, how that makes me very angry. The intersection of that anger and a growing federal investigation led the family and others like them to Washington, D.C. None of this ever had to happen. Reimer spoke in front of the Capitol. I cannot tell you why it took so long for a safety defect to be announced. General Motors CEO spoke in front of lawmakers. It was during this process legislators released documents claiming the company knew about the ignition flaw for more than a decade, with one lawmaker saying the fix could have been made for just 57 cents per part. You can add up all the prices of them springs. It doesn't add up. Unfortunately, it cost my daughter's life. You don't put a car on the road and even think that there's a possibility that it's unsafe. And someone in GM did that. But I can tell you we will find out. GM promised a full investigation into what happened, including the remanufacturing of the faulty part. Back in 2006, it was altered to increase its strength and safety. Normally when that happens, a new number is assigned to the new product. But in this case, that was never done. That made tracking down the flaw more difficult for investigators. The family argues it concealed cost cutting. It cost lives. It smells like a cover up from what we've been hearing. Was there a cover up? 
I believe there was. It is tragic. GM apologized to the families of 13 victims linked to the flawed ignition parts. Natasha's family believes she was the second or third casualty in that group. The CEO shared her condolences directly with the families in a closed door meeting. She just told each family she was sorry. We accepted her apology, yeah. It was all very scripted and she had two um, lawyers beside her that shook her hands and said, I'm so sorry for your loss. And she went around to 13 families and said that, but it was all very scripted and very, very guided by her lawyers. And I found that very painful. On the road towards truth, one family failed to find closure, but did find answers, including what may have killed their loved one and what might have triggered the tragedy. I believe it was corporate greed. I'd rather have my daughter back. I'd rather have everyone have their child back. But in the end, GM, I hope, gets this right. The General Motors investigation and perhaps the federal one could wrap up weeks from now. Both Natasha and Amy's family are part of a lawsuit against General Motors. Natasha's mother is hoping for criminal charges in this matter.